Hey YouTube, I'm back as I finally have some more information to share with you on the work that I'm doing. I'll start with the addressing pose estimation files. Um, in the beginning of the week, I noticed that all pose estimation algorithms or all pose algorithms just return different kind of JSON files. And in all of my previous research that uses pose estimation, uh, for every one of these files or for every one of these algorithms, I had to figure out uh, myself how the pose is structured as you get a, like, a list of points and you need to figure out what is a head, what is a body, what is disjoint and what is disjoint and etc. And you need to write um, a utility file to draw them and you need to write uh, numerous other things to uh, handle these poses. I figured that there currently is no pose estimation standard file, so I decided to write one. I'm not sure if that's the best decision, but I've done it anyway. Um, the reasons behind it is that now um, I can write a file that has a header saying uh, what joint is which, um, even add some coloring information, what uh, joint is connected to what, um, etc. And for that file format, I can write um, utilities that are generic and can adjust to uh, all of my future research uh, as well. Um, utilities such as uh, data augmentation, frame interpolation, and uh, many others. So I started by looking at OpenPose output files as reference and writing my own binary file that um, pretty much matches their format. Uh, with the one distinction is that in my file format there is a header that says exactly um, everything uh, everything you need to know about the pose and my file format also supports videos rather than just uh, frame by frame files. So I wrote a Python reader and writer that can um, read uh, open pose JSON files and as well as binary files and write them as binary files and it supports uh, images and videos. Um, then I went to JavaScript and wrote a web component that uh, encapsulates an SVG uh, data viewer that can show images or even videos as SVG animations. Um, I had some problems with SVG animations as when you show lots of them on screen, uh, the screen gets really, really choppy. And right now I'm just updating frame by frame with a, a timer. Now that I can view all of the uh, images and videos using the JavaScript SVG viewer, I decided to try some data augmentation as it seems to help a lot in image processing. Instead of needing to write my own um, data augmentation for um, these poses key points, um, I found that ImageAug, the largest library uh, that exists for augmenting image data, supports augmenting key points. And while our key points are not uh, strictly attached to an image, um, uh, they can distort them or augment them um, too. So I opted for using that library as it's very extensive and includes many um, different augmentations. Um, for example, some augmentations that are um, super relevant for key points and for sign language uh, would be a random rotation, so we can rotate the image a bit that way or a bit that way, a random shear effect, which can stretch the image on a diagonal, a horizontal flip, so if we have a, a video of someone signing with the right hand um, and someone signing with the left hand, uh, if they sign the same, then it means the same thing. Sign language is not um, directional, specifically. So we can just flip the images and um, duplicate um, the amount of data that we have. We also can do a piecewise affine transform, which distorts the image um, in different places in different ways. So it can take a part of the image and stretch it, and another part and um, compress it and I'll have examples for everything on screen uh, that you can see how uh, exactly every um, transformation or augmentation changes images. And then I decided to just use this library as um, I don't need to write my own and a lot of people are familiar with this library. So I wrote uh, an augmentation uh, function that just takes a sequence of these uh, transformations and can augment uh, key points, videos or images. Um, one example for um, a good, uh, in my opinion, a good uh, augmentation sequence for key points would be uh, this one. Um, this sequence includes the piecewise, um, the piecewise affine transform, which is uh, really good at uh, distorting different parts of the image or the video, but is super slow. 
So I uh, addressed um, to ImageLog library and they uh, gave me a, a version that works only on key points, doesn't work on images, but is 200 times faster. So I decided to go with it and uh, publish that version as well. And now we have a super fast way to augment uh, videos or images when we want to input them into our models. On screen right now are some examples of data augmentation of a single image uh, without a horizontal flip. So you can see all the differences between um, different poses. Um, the main thing that we need to make sure in these augmentations is that they don't change the sign that someone is signing. They look quite similar, uh, maybe in different perspective, maybe just stretched a bit, a taller person, a shorter person, a skinnier or fatter person, but the sign stays the same. This way we can generalize on different people. Another important thing when dealing with models is to have all the data in the same format. So uh, if we have data that is in 8 frames per second and other data that is in 30 frames per second, we could either tell the model, hey model, no, that this is 8 frames per second, this is 30, um, but it is much better to just give the model just 24 frames per second data or just a fixed number. And as we see from the uh, distribution of frames per second in the Chicago uh, FS Wild data set, uh, we see that it fluctuates. It's not that the entire data set includes the same frame rate. And so uh, I opted for uh, adding interpolation abilities. So now um, the pose utilities include interpolate, which um, you just give it a new frame rate and it creates frames that are interpolated from the original video. Here's, for example, a video that I have in eight frames per second um, that I um, interpolated once to 24 frames per second, so it looks smoother, and once to 60 frames per second, so it looks super smooth and like it was recorded in that frames per second. Future experiments can show that, or might show, that we don't need 60 frames per second, but we only need five frames per second as signs are not signed super, super quickly, um, or that we do need um, six frames per second for normal signs, but for finger spelling, we do need uh, 20 frames per second as that is done quicker. Um, I don't know that yet and I hope to find out in the future. But right now I just have a way to um, give my models the same frame rate for the data so they don't have to um, try to generalize over different frame rates. There are different ways to interpolate data. When we have points uh, here on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, we can, um, for example, just uh, draw lines between adjacent points in time and uh, get what's called a linear interpolation. This interpolation is not continuous in the function space and um, is not really good because things just look like they are moving linearly. Um, on the other hand, we also have um, more advanced interpolations like the cosine interpolation which isn't that good also, but is continuous. Um, given some points, it can just create um, something like a quarter of a cosine and stretch it between these two points, um, such that the function looks more continuous, but it only looks at the two points that um, it's trying to interpolate between right now and doesn't look at the entire picture. Other interpolations like the cubic spline take uh, into account uh, neighboring points as well and create a cubic polynomial that can just um, interpolate between different points but as you can see it even goes beyond minimum points as it sees that the data tends to uh, go that way and such this function is smoother and is probably better to work with instead of having linear transform we can also have like half a circle which is much more natural for humans. So to summarize this video, I made a library that has its own pose file format that can load from binary or uh, from open pose file formats right now and um, can also show this data um, in a nice HTML viewer that only requires one tag uh, to activate. Uh, it can show images or it can show videos, um, which is important for our sign language case. 
Uh, further, it can augment the data so we have um, different kind of noises um, in the data that we can uh, feed later to models uh, to generalize better. And it also can interpolate between frames to um, make the job for the network easier or to uh, make the viewing experience for us better. Um, all the code is available on GitHub, of course, and is open source and everybody is uh, welcome to contribute and help. Um, I will develop this library um, a bit more uh, in, the, in the next few months um, until the time that I am uh, ready to start modeling. And then I can actually see if the augmentations help and by how much and which augmentations help, as well as the uh, data interpolation um, and maybe even um, try to augment data um, with the interpolation such that we make some parts of the video faster, some parts slower, um, or to make the entire video slower as people don't sign in a constant rate. That's been all for me for today. Um, I hope you found this video educational and I hope that more people uh, would embrace this pose estimation format and we don't have to uh, write our own utilities for each new project. And I hope this format also makes it easier to share data between different projects or between different uh, research teams as now that there is a, a single specific format, um, everyone can read it and you don't have to write specifications for whatever weird format you're writing. Um, I know I've been doing some problems like this in the past. So uh, thank you very much and I hope that I'll give another update soon.